Welcome to Gospel Commission. I hope you're blessed in the Lord today. In this video, we're going to look at what uh, the so-called free grace movement teaches about repentance and look at how that contradicts with what the Bible teaches about repentance. Now, it's Christmas time, and in East Indonesia, I guess the way to celebrate Christmas is to have loud music. It doesn't have to be Christmas music, but to have real loud music all day long. So there's no getting around it. This video will have a soundtrack. And so if you hear that, just enjoy Christmas time, even though it's just loud, bumping music, whatever it may be. So let's go ahead and jump to Acts chapter 17. And first, let me note that whenever the, the, the false grace movement talks about repentance, they deal with it in different ways. They all have to deal with it. Some of them deal with it by appealing to dispensationalism, and they'll say every time repentance is mentioned, especially in the Gospels, that's the gospel of the kingdom, and that doesn't refer to Christians because they're under the gospel of grace. So they'll wash away many passages that they have to deal with by just appealing to the false idea of dispensationalism. But others will not take the dispensationalist route, so they'll have to go back and they'll have to redefine the term of repentance. And I'm going to deal with that today, those that redefine this term, and how they usually redefine it is as follows follows. Some of them will appeal to Acts chapter 17. They'll start in verse 29. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God and we ought not to suppose that the deity is like gold or silver or stone or an engraved work of art or an image of the reflection of men. So they'll say, look, Paul was talking to the Athenians. They were idol worshipers. That means they didn't believe in God. And then he'll say, verse 30, God overlooked the times of ignorance, but now he commands all men everywhere to repent. And they'll say, what does repentance mean? It means change your mind. Stop being unbelieving and start believing. So they will make it equivalent. Repentance was just mean to turn from unbelief to belief, and they will make it the same as faith. But this is not what the Bible teaches. Let's learn what Jesus teaches about repentance by going back to Luke chapter 11. Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God, it says in, in Mark chapter 1, and, and he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. So he told them to repent and to believe. Now, what did he mean by repent? He went around Israel preaching repentance. What did he mean? Luke chapter 11, verse 32. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment in th with this generation and will condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now one greater than Jonah is here. Jesus is saying, when Jonah preached, the men of Nineveh repented, but now the Son of God is preaching to you and you're not repenting. What does he expect them to do? What is the repentance that he expects? Let's turn back to Jonah and see what he was referring to. Jonah chapter 3, starting in verse 7. Then he made a proclamation in Nineveh by decree of the king and his nobles. No man or animal, no herd or flock shall taste anything. They shall not eat or drink water. So he declared, the king declared a fast. Both man and animals shall cover themselves with sackcloth. They are to humble themselves with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. So they're supposed to pray to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from their violence. They're supposed to turn away from evil acts that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent, change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. Okay, so this is what the king commanded. What did God see and what did God do? Verse 10, when God saw their actions, that they turned from their evil ways, he changed his mind about the disaster that he had said he would, would bring upon them, and he did not do it. So they turned away from their evil ways, and God relented from the disaster. What would we call this? What did Jesus call this in Luke chapter 11? He called this repentance, turning away, to change our mind towards God, towards sin, towards ourself, to turn away from rebellion, and to submit to the living God. This is what repentance is. We see this confirmed and clarified if we go to Luke chapter 3, the preaching of John the Baptist. Starting in verse 7, he said, Then he said to the crowds that came to, out to be baptized by him, You children of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruit worthy of repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father, for I say to you that God is able to raise up these stones to raise up children for Abraham. So John the Baptist makes a distinction between repentance and the fruit of repentance. So repentance is the turning away from rebellion in our heart, and the fruit of the repentance is the actions that come from that change of heart. We no longer live and do evil things because we have already changed our attitude towards God and we've submitted to him. Verse 9, Even now the axe is put to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So we must bear good fruit. Verse 10, the people asked him, what then must we do? John answered, he who has two tunics, let him give to him who has none. And he who has food, let him do likewise. 
No longer live selfish lives, but live generous lives. Verse 12. Then tax, the tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what must we do? He said to them, Collect no more than what is appointed to you. Stop being greedy, stop stealing money, and be content with your wages. Verse 14, the soldiers likewise demanded of him, and what must we do? He said to them, do no violence to anyone, nor accuse anyone falsely, and be content with your wages. Be content, and don't extort money violently from other people. This is what they were told to do, to bear fruit worthy of repentance, to bear fruit in keeping with repentance. This is not different than what Paul preached if we turn to Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26, starting in verse 19. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those at Damascus, then at Jerusalem and throughout all Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God. They should turn away from their rebellion and turn in submission to God and do works proving their repentance. Then they should have the fruit of repentance by changing their actions, not just their heart. If their heart is changed, their actions will follow. As Jesus said, it's what is in the heart of a man that makes him unclean. That whenever something is in the heart, that is what makes a man unclean because it will lead to evil adulteries and immoralities and all kinds of wickedness. Now let's go ahead and turn to Acts chapter 20. Jesus, or Paul clarifies what he preached everywhere. Verse 20. I did not keep from declaring what was beneficial to you and teaching you publicly from house to house, testifying to both Jews and Greeks of repentance towards God. So this is to repent of our rebellion and turn to God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Are repentance and, the, and faith the same thing? No, they are related. One must turn from their rebellion and turn back to God and submit to him in order to submit in faith to Jesus Christ. A rebellious person does not want to place their trust in Christ because they are self, uh, they're proud and filled with uh, their own boasting. They don't want to place their trust in Christ. They trust in themselves. So they must repent towards God and place their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance and faith are two different things. We see it clearly in this verse because repentance is towards God and faith is towards the Lord Jesus Christ. They are not exactly the same thing. Let's go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 18. This gives us another, Jesus tells a parable that gives us another insight into the nature of repentance. Luke chapter 18, starting in verse 9. He told this parable to some who trusted in themselves as though they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, and one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed these things about himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. This man was unrepentant, and he did not have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because he was filled with faith towards himself. Verse 12, I fast twice a week and I tithe of all that I earn. Verse 13, but the tax collector standing at a distance would not even lift his eyes to heaven, but struck his chest saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. What does repentance look like? It is a deep regret and a hatred for what we've done and how we've dealt with God. That we turn from our rebellion and we no longer want to rebel against God and we cry out to God for mercy because we recognize that he is justified if he were to judge us. Verse 14, I tell you, this man went to the, his house justified rather than the other. This man who humbled himself was given grace by God because God gives grace to the humble but opposes the proud. As Jesus goes on to say, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Repentance is required for reconciliation with God. What is repentance? It's regretting what we've done, hating it, recognizing God could judge us. We turn from our rebellion in our heart and then we begin to practice righteousness and obedience to God because we're no longer walking as rebels to him. This is how we come to, we come to uh, repent before God. It's not a matter of just stopping being unbelieving and start believing. No, we turn from rebellion. Now let's go back to Acts 17 where we started and look more closely at the passage. Verse 29, therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to suppose that the deity is like gold or silver or stone or an engraved work of art or an image of a reflection of men. These men were wicked. They were not just unbelievers. They were idolaters. They were rebels against the living God. Though in their heart, they knew that God had created all things, that his power and glory were revealed in creation, and they knew what God required of them. They suppressed the truth and unrighteousness, as it says in Romans chapter 1, verse 18, and therefore the wrath of God comes on them because they rebelled against the living God. And so God hands them over to all kinds of vile wickedness because he hated their rebellion because it was enmity with him. 
It wasn't just a matter of they were just, oh, they just didn't believe. They didn't have enough information. No, they knew the truth. They rejected the truth and they made themselves enemies of God. Therefore, in verse 20, uh, in verse 30, God overlooked the times of ignorance, but now he commands all men everywhere to repent, to turn from your rebellion, your wicked ways, denying the living God and serving wood and stone instead. Turn from your rebellion. He goes on. Verse 31, for he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. God is coming to judge the world in righteousness. Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse uh, 28 and 29, that on that day, everyone will hear the voice of the Son of God, those that have done good to everlasting life, those that have done evil to everlasting judgment. They will be raised to judgment or to life, whether they've done evil or done good. The Bible says everywhere in the New Testament that we'll be judged according to what we've done. This doesn't mean we walk in perfection. It does mean that we walk a repentant life where we're no longer rebellious against God, but we're submitted to him. But it goes on by it. It says, for he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, even given assurance of this to all men by raising him from the dead. Do you see what Paul did here? He called them to repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, whom God had raised from the dead. He wasn't just saying, stop being unbelieving and believe in God. No, he was saying, stop your rebellion against God. Turn away from these wicked things and these idols. Trust in Jesus Christ who is risen from the dead because he's the one that's going to judge you on the last day in righteousness. So I hope we see that this error of the Hebraic, or not Hebraic roots, this error of the, the, the so-called false grace movement, this leads people astray because it tells them they don't have to turn from the rebellion. No, if you don't turn from your rebellion, you will suffer the wrath of God. That's what the word of God teaches. That's what Jesus teaches, Paul teaches. That's what John the Baptist taught. That's what the Bible teaches. This is God's word. God bless.